And now we can start. So I would like to introduce Ruben Bloomgarten from the Netherlands, and he wants to talk about his project, Choke Point, Choke Point Project. Give him a warm round of applause. Uh, okay, the choke point project. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so what I intend to do is just very quickly go over the what and the how, and hopefully skip into the why, uh, and leave enough time for some Q&A. Uh, the intention of the project is to create a, a near-time global censorship monitoring system. Um, uh, Okay, so the, actually it has, it, has, it has multiple aspects. So it's a global near-time uh, censorship monitoring system. As you can see over here, uh, the intention is to have, whenever an incident happens, it show up on a map. Now, um, uh, there are a number of problems with, Jesus Christ. Okay, can I start again? <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. I think next time I'll just write everything out, that'll be easier. <laughs> okay, the project has uh, various aspects. The idea is to, first of all, collect uh, a, a massive amount of data from various data sources. Uh, these could be either to create a, a connection map, a reliable near real-time connection map, which would be at the uh, which would be uh, which would be created um, uh, by parsing large data sets into the system. Uh, uh, another aspect is uh, oh Jesus, okay, uh, okay. So th the point is to. <laughs> The point is to create a, uh, I've done this I think 15 times in the past four days with a bunch of people, but for some reason I'm just getting stuck here. So please bear, bear with me. Okay, so we have all this data everywhere, right? Um, well, I'm really stuck. Maybe I need to drink a little bit more. Okay, the point is to, to visualize for, uh, speci specifically for non-technical people, uh, the actual current state of, uh, uh, of, of the internet. Now, uh, uh, one, one aspect is the, the connection map, like I just previously tried to mention. Uh, okay, hold on, maybe I should actually read my notes. <laughs> I'm, ever, I'm, I'm just having a complete blackout here, so again, bear with me. But I talk very fast, so I hope I'll be able to tell you everything in the time I have left, so. Okay, so, so first thing we're trying to collect uh, technical information, uh, near real-time technical information from the actual, uh, f from what actually happens on the network in various country, countries. Uh, we're trying to uh, 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 aggregate that with uh, contextual information. So legal, uh, uh, legal information, what laws are existing in what country, 
circumvention information, what circumvention measure is actually existing in what country, um, what is the current status of that circumvention measure, because for, men, um, for mo most people out there, they might have heard of some kind of measure, but they're not aware of, of whether or not that is st actually still usable and what the legal status of that circumvention measure is. So they might use something thinking that they're safe, and it turns out that they're not. So this is all very changeable information. Most of the audience here keeps, keeps up with the, the, the latest developments in, in, in that regard, but most people do not. Um, uh, so, actually, I think maybe I should just go to the next slide because I'm getting confused again. Oop, here we go. Of course, now I'm in my office thing. Okay, so uh, let's go step by step. So this is an overview of a country. Uh, the first bit you see is the connectivity status. Uh, uh, that will be derived from an aggregation of large, of, of, of large data sets from already existing uh, large distri distributed systems, such as Google, Facebook, uh, MLab, so forth and so on. Uh, then there's transparency data, which uh, right now is just being generated from the uh, Google uh, transparency uh, information, which is, which is very limited, uh, but at least it provides some contextual information. There's the currently functioning uh, circumvention uh, information, which is what I just referred to. Uh, there's current legislation, uh, uh, which is something that is going to be hard to, uh, to par parse manually. Uh, then there's lobbying activity. Now there we're looking for uh, there we're looking for corporations with other organizations such as uh, journalists without borders that that had a talk uh, about in, uh, in room one before me. Um, now the uh, Jesus. So here, this would be the transparency data. This is actual data that we have imported, but as uh, as I mentioned, this is very slow data. So there's nothing nothing near real time about this. Um, actually, maybe I should turn the entire thing into a and A. Maybe I can just uh, just start answering questions instead of uh, rambling on. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a planned project. Uh, we have some elements already functioning. Uh, uh, we have the transparency data, which is already being parsed into the system. We have the connectivity status, which is, which is also already being parsed into the system, but currently we only have one data set. And that one data set is the MLAB data. What we did is we, uh, we took one specific element of their data, which is the fact that they received a connection from a specific geography. Uh, now, that is something that is very repeatable uh, with many large data sets that are out there. So the more data sets we have, the more reliable this, uh, this will become, and it's fairly trivial to do it in, in near real time. So if uh, at any point a country uh, gets cut off, uh, uh, it will show on the map fairly immediately. Of course, we won't be able to differentiate between whether that is done on purpose or whether it's done through some natural disaster or someone making a mistake. So that is, in fact, information that uh, 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 other people will then have to uh, go and look into. Uh, uh, the, all the data sources that we, that we intend to uh, collect uh, will be published in a, uh, in, a, in a publicly accessible database. So uh, the idea is that we choose, uh, we choose what we feel is important, uh, we will visualize what we feel is important, uh, and then anyone else can go and have a different opinion, look at our data, and come to different conclusions or come up with new ideas. Uh, first of all, I would say that please hold up your hands when you have a question, and then I would probably um, give my first question to you. Yes. What is the general aim of your project? Could you explain it to me in a few sentences? Yeah, okay, so the general aim of the, uh, the project is, uh, okay, it's, it's geared towards uh, uh, journalists, 
politicians, uh, research, uh, researchers, uh, activist groups. Uh, so one, one aspect of the project is to uh, uh, have it function as an early warning systems, system for organizations such as Access Now that would really like to know, okay, what is happening in that country right now. Uh, another aspect of it is to have it be uh, an archival uh, uh, system. So you can go to, uh, uh, to the data set related to a specific country and then figure out uh, what is the history of, uh, uh, of this country. Uh, uh, is there an increase of, uh, 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 of malevolent behavior? Is there a decrease? Maybe a new government has come to power and you would like to see are they actually uh, implementing new policies or are they not implementing new policies? Um, another question, will there be one database that is a single point of failure or do you... No, 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 but there will be, uh, the, there will be a publicly uh, reachable database, so that that database will be updated and, and published, uh, which can be accessed through an API, but no, but that will not, the database that we publish for access will not be the database that we use to render the, render the information, that will simply be a duplicate. Um, I have another question. Where does your data come from? Uh, the data will come from, from multiple sources. Uh, as I stated, for the, for the connection map, that's fairly, that's fairly simple. Now, for the more specific uh, uh, censorship uh, uh, information, we actually need a data collection system. Now, there, uh, there is currently a data collection system being developed called Uniprobe, which intends to do exactly that. So that would be a system that could, for instance, verify uh, whether the, the DNS reply that someone gets from a specific specific country is actually giving the IP address that it's supposed to give. Uh. Uh, when you make the visualization, uh, you will try also to aggregate uh, different uh, contexts like uh, security tools uh, or um, um, political content or pornography. Is, uh, is it possible to make this kind of aggregation? Yes, it's definitely possible. Uh, at the moment, we don't, uh, we don't have plans to do all of that. We're, we're fairly limited in our scope right now. But the whole intention is to collect... Uh, uh, so we're, we're assuming that we'll collect so much data that is not specifically relevant for what we intend to do today that we will be, uh, that we'll continue, we'll be able to continuously uh, create new contextual information. And this is the, the, the second question. A possible list of context um, updated, where should be obtained? Come again? Uh, a list of context for uh, autom uh, automatically understand that uh, a specific uh, site uh, censored uh, is uh, rated on a political content or not, in example. How should be obtained? Uh, how would that uh, contextual aggregation be, uh, mm -hmm. uh, be taking place? Well, it's the, the data sets are coming in basically through, uh, through timestamp. So uh, if you have a specific idea, you can ac access the source data, source data and try and correlate various data sets one to another. Uh, an example is like we, I had, a, we had a discussion uh, yesterday with the people from, uh, uh, from Journalists Without Borders. And they uh, and and we figured out that that there would be an opportunity for them to ha to create an XML feed based on tags, uh, whenever they get uh, reports of certain specific things. Now, if we have such a feed and we then have the the technical uh, uh, the technical da technical data about the, about the fact that in a certain area there was a massive drop in connectivity or uh, we have detected that there's been a uh, 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 hijacking, uh, hijacking of, uh, of Gmail or something of, uh, of that sort, you would be able to correlate those incidents to, those, uh, to that technical information. Any more questions? For uh, the connectivity status, do you intend to run servers in many, many countries, or is there another data source? No, no, for the connectivity state, uh, uh, status, the, uh, because the thing is what we're interested in is whether uh, people can reach the systems that they want to reach. That's what we're interested in. So, uh, and that is information that already exists because those systems have that information. Uh, those systems are aware of the amount of connections they're, uh, they're getting per day, per hour, per minute, and they know how many connect connections they're supposed to uh, expect, and most of this is all low and all, all already existing. So by taking multiple of these massively distributed, dis, dis, distributed systems, such as Google, such as uh, Facebook, such as Twitter, uh, 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 my assumption is that we can reliably uh, uh, create a connection map. Yeah. 
Uh, what about uh, what about corporate information which is secret? So can somebody drop uh, information which is normally left behind? For example, a large DDoS attack on a site which is not reported in the public, or something which is has not the awareness. Uh, it should have because it's uh, behind a corporate firewall. I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, is it only about public information or is it also about something uh, somebody gets knowledge of? Uh, for example, some, some uh, secret actions behind a corporate firewall which should be uh, if, if, we cannot, if, we can, if we cannot verify the source, uh, we cannot use it in our data set. So uh, a single report, uh, uh, for instance, the, 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 the example of, of journalists without borders uh, would, would be that they, they would not be the only instance. And there would be a big caveat saying that we have a report, but we have no verification. Now, if you have, on average, one report without verification, and all of a sudden you get 100 reports without verification, you can then uh, uh, fairly safely assume that something might be going on. But again, we're not making absolute statements. So we're not saying that if you see it on this map, it is absolutely happening. So in your example, no, that would be one source, so we would not be able to, uh, to process that. I just have a small question. Could you probably go back one slide? Because I think then the uh, whole information about one country would be visible. Here we ah, go. I see. Thank you. Right. Okay. Next question. <laughs> um, do you uh, know how much resources you will need to keep this project going, sort of once you have it set up? And do you have a plan for funding or otherwise making those resources happen, well, people and computers? Yeah, well, we're we're, uh, we're currently talking to a number of uh, a number of parties to uh, uh, to acquire funding. Uh, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs is one. They are they are currently explaining to us how to get uh, funding from them. Uh, and we have some other uh, some other organizations as well that we are we are talking to. Uh, now, as as the the amount of resources, obviously, um, uh, they will be quite extensive. Uh, we are aware of this, uh, but currently we are specifically looking into the acquisition of the data sources, uh, and not so much into the into the into the resources that will be needed. But we are uh, in the design that we've made for the environment. We have uh, incorporated some level of scalability. More questions? Ah, wonderful. One question from the IRC. Um, the IRC wants to know what is the institutional background from the project? Is Come again? The? What is the institutional background from the project? Is it a sociology university or a company or is it just you interested in it? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's me and, uh, 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 and another 15 people or so. Um, um, uh, okay, my, my personal background is uh, well, what is my personal background? <laughs> uh, okay, so the, 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 the concept of the project came from uh, Egypt being turned off, basically. Uh, Egypt being turned off, and then some people said, well, you know, why didn't we know about that? Can't we see that? Uh, is there a faster way of doing that? Or like, what can we do? Uh, uh, I was not part of that group at that time. Now, I st at a certain point, we uh, we met, and it turned out that they had a mostly conceptual uh, interpretation of the project. Uh, I have a technical background, and started thinking about how can we actually uh, acquire all this information, what kind of information would we need from what sources and how can we relate them one to the other. Uh, so no, we, have, uh, we, are, not, we are not a company. Uh, there are a, few, a number of organizations uh, associated with it. Um, uh, so that's the institutional background. Hi, uh, maybe I can add something to that. I'm part of the, the project. In the, the very, very uh, beginning of the project, began just before the, the whole Egypt thing then. There was uh, Douglas uh, Rushkoff in New York had 
began asking about the, the, the control of the internet, that the internet was now not a yes or no, is it good, is it bad, it just is. And who was having the control of that at, that, at, at the moment in time. Then we, um, in, in an organization called the Peer-to-Peer -Peer Foundation, were involved in investigating that. The, when, when the Egypt event happened, that just confirmed, or it seemed to confirm that, that status, and we began to look at, okay, we're in this situation, how can we actually see what's going on? We thought that would be easy. Clearly, we were very, very naive. And then we began to look around for people that had the experience and the ability to, to do that, and then the, the, the project has kind of gone, uh, it's taken on its own life since then. So there's, there's no one institution or organization behind it now, it's just, um, a group of people that came together that were concerned about this issue and at the moment we're also reaching out to other organizations for example as Ruben was saying reporters without borders or whoever that can provide the other contextual information yeah. so it would actually what we're looking for in that sense is partnerships with with existing groups or other groups that can, can that can provide us information that we can provide back uh, a, a, a useful resource that anybody can access and there's a, a there's another really big problem with uh, with this with this type of data if you don't have the background uh, it's 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 very hard to uh, make understandable why it is uh, uh, important to know what's what's going going on on this level hence all the contextual information because we we uh, we have a big problem uh, at the moment with uh, legislators, uh, adjudicators, reporters, uh, uh, basically a anyone involved in the four estates of, 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 our, of our societies, um, believing that something fundamentally new is going on with, uh, 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 with the internet or with anything that is digital. Hence we have misnomers such as uh, digital crime, such as uh, digital rights, uh, uh, internet freedom, all of these are uh, horrendous misnomers um, because we are obviously talking about freedom, we're talking about civil rights, we're talking about human rights and they are no different. The only thing that is different now is the way, uh, uh, the, way the elements of society are presented. And there is no fundamental problem, but because there is that uh, essential misunderstanding, um, uh, uh, we are actually ending up with legislators that believe that they need to apply new legislation. Uh, take secrecy of, co of correspondence, for, uh, for, in uh, for instance. Um, if uh, I would now propose a piece of legislation uh, which would say that all postal services would be obliged to take the letter that, you've, uh, uh, that you're sending to, that they're receiving from someone, write down uh, who, uh, who sent it and who it's addressed to, uh, maybe even open it and making a copy of it, uh, sticking it into a big you know, physical uh, file, um, uh, and then sending it on to you. Everyone everywhere, whether it's a 96-year-old granny uh, or, or uh, uh, someone who doesn't even know how to read or write, will be aware of the fact that that would be absolutely ludicrous and will say, no, we cannot tolerate that. The problem is that with something like the data retention law, this is already the case. This legislation has already been implemented. Now, I believe a lot of, a lot of the people involved uh, uh, are, not, are not acting out of malevolence, uh, uh, but they're acting out of a, out of a fundamental misunderstanding. Uh, and we're, we're hoping that to be able to, uh, by, by being able to present this type of information in a contextualized uh, uh, way, uh, we could hopefully rem uh, remove this essential misunderstanding. So we have time for th two or three more questions. Any signs? Els, uh, I, I will ask my question first and your audio angel is coming over. Uh, well, I, I don't not that deeply into how the internet works. I study bioinformatics. So I have one question. How do I hack your system? <laughs> At least part of it when I'm in an evil country. Ah. Um, well, that's a, uh, that's a very good question. Well, you could, of course, uh, start sending uh, bad data, definitely. Uh, 
and apart from that, I really wouldn't know how to. But the thing is, the bad data should uh, show up as, uh, uh, as aberrant information because, uh, like I said, we are uh, relating various data sources to each other. So again, a single source of data is not going to tell you very much. And to, to make any type of conclusion from a single source of data is, is not going to be, be valid. Now, I'm sure there's more. There's there's going to be much smarter ways of, of polluting the data set, but at the moment we're not at the stage where this is an issue. Another question: um, connectivity status. I understand it's quite easy to find out. Like Egypt has been switched off. They mm -hmm. had a lot of contact before, and then you don't have a lot of contact anymore. But what about if a certain country has a dictatorship and has had it for years, mm -hmm. and people just couldn't, uh, or only one percent of the population um, uh, could only uh, uh, reach the service they wanted to? How would that show up on your map? Uh, well, again, it would only uh, the only thing that would show up if there's a, a relative drop of connectivity. So uh -huh. then it would be these, this privileged uh, group of people that would no longer have connectivity. Now, the assumption there, of course, is that that's most likely a technical problem because they're not going to be cut off for for uh, uh, for political reasons. Um, however, uh, uh, you could potentially relate the amount of internet users in in in. Uh, in, in context to the population with other sources of information such as those of, of Journalists Without Borders, such as uh, um, various legislation that has, been, that has been published about that country. So again, it's, it's, it's about context. Okay. So, one more question somewhere? None anymore? Then, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. It was very interesting. Okay, thank you. And I think we managed it, I would yeah, say. So, end. give sure. him a really big round of applause for his work.